This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. So there's going to be an S7 and an S7 Plus in two sizes, likely to compete with the iPad Pro that comes in two sizes, 11 inch and this 12.4 inch. Now this is interesting for Android tablets because usually they run often on like kind of the last gen processor. They're always the redheaded stepchildren in the world. Even Samsung's high end tablets, sometimes you feel that way. Well, this time we get the Snapdragon 865 plus 5G uh, capable if you get the 5G model on board. That's really quite nice. You also get an OLED display. If you go for the 12.4 inch, you get an IPS class display on the 11 inch. We're gonna look at it now. So this is going to vary probably country by country and whether you get a Wi-Fi only or a 4G or a 5G version of the tablet in the United States, I think we only get Wi-Fi and 5G options, but Mystic Black, Mystic Silver, and Mystic Bronze for the larger 7 Plus model, and I believe Mystic Black for the 11 inch model. We have the black one, obviously. Uh, the Bronze model looks just like the new Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra Bronze, and the new Buds Live that match it, and so on, and this watch right here, which is the Galaxy Watch 3, that is the Mystic Bronze color. So this is a first look review because this product isn't going to be released until the fall, as Samsung says. So not final software, all that sort of thing. We don't get to do benchmarks and give it a final rating sort of thing, but we can tell you everything about it. Actually, it's very stable and very fluid. Certainly it has a fast CPU and it should be. Uh, you can see the storage and RAM options uh, on the screen right now and some of the other specs here, but it's got everything you would expect from a modern high-end tablet that I believe is going to be 650 for the 11 and 850 for the 12.4 inch and Wi-Fi only model, probably a couple hundred dollars more for 5G. And really with Samsung's Galaxy Tab S line, I mean, you're never hurting for quality here. The challenge is always with Android tablets is uh, they don't get a lot of love in terms of apps, ones that support big screens really well. So you're not just using phone apps blown up. And Samsung kind of tries to address that. Number one, they have that partnership going strong with Microsoft. So you got Office looking good on this and OneDrive and all that sort of stuff that's preloaded. And as you know, Samsung makes a lot of their own apps. So they've got their own video apps and their own on image viewers and all that sort of thing. But honestly, there are games and there are enough apps that are tablet optimized. It's not like you're gonna pick this up and look at it and think, well, what do I do with it? It's not that bad either. We do have the S Pen on board, and yes, it's included. Take that Apple, and it's a nice size pen, and it's the usual Wacom EMR, and they say latency is even further reduced. And it also helps that we have 120 hertz screens on both the S7 and the S7 Plus. So that means, you know, we use jargon like reduced latency and all that sort of thing. What that means is there's less of a delay when the ink goes down and it's so smooth and flowy. It's really very nice. That's the idea there. And in fact, speaking of apps again, the reason I mentioned that is because Clip Studio Paint, those of you who are digital artists, you sure know what that is, especially if you're doing comics or manga. And real popular on Windows and on Mac OS, and now it's available for iOS, for the iPad. And we haven't really seen it on Android, but Samsung has gotten them to bring it over. And in fact, you get a six month tryout for free because it's one of those subscription based kind of programs. So that's a pretty serious program right there for those of you who are doing that sort of illustration. The S Pen is delightful. I love it. I love Wacom EMR pens. It's right up there, certainly with the Apple Pencil. The only thing I don't love is the very glossy display, so your pen's going to slide a little, but hey, a matte screen protector will take care of that. Though I'd hate to put anything between me and the nice OLED display on this bigger model. For cameras, you have an 8 megapixel front camera, which is actually quite good. I actually find that I look a little better on it versus the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus camera, for example. And nowadays, because of COVID, that's pretty important for a lot of people. You've got a 13 megapixel rear main camera and a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera. And much as we joke about using cameras on tablets, they're pretty darn good. So for those of you who are using this for vertical markets, or say for artists, again, because often you want to take pictures of something that you're going to paint later, perfect for that. We have AKG quad stereo speakers on board again, competing with the iPad Pro there and Dolby software sound. And they sound very good and very loud. I was actually kind of surprised and startled by it out of the box. I'm like, whoa, turn that volume down. So no complaints there. 
We have the keyboard cover, which is the book cover keyboard, and there's just a book cover also, and it's a two-piece affair, and I like that a lot because oftentimes I just want to rip the keyboard off and take it away with me to do something else, but I like to keep the back protected. So it's magnetically attached to the back, and it has that usual drop-down kind of thing that reveals the S Pen, which still, weirdly, is magnetically attached to the back and will charge there. Now, you don't need to charge it to just use it as a pen. It's just for the Bluetooth features that are available if you want to use it for controlling PowerPoint presentations and all that sort of stuff. In terms of hardware and build quality and looks, this is the best one that Samsung has made yet. I mean, their, their tab, tab S line's always been nice looking, but every detail, the, I like the straight sides on this. I like the look of even the logo. No, obviously no decal here, but no like gold glued on something or other. It's just nice and etched onto the back there. So yeah, you don't feel like, oh wow, the iPad Pro or something is so much nicer in terms of hardware. It's nice and sturdy, good build quality, a little bit of bezels on the edge, and I'm okay with that because any of you who handle large tablets know how easy it is to accidentally touch something and just change what's on your screen. It can be really annoying. Battery life on this so far has been really good, but I mean, we have immense batteries here. The Tab S7 has an 8,000 milliamp battery. This one has a 10,090 milliamp battery, so hey, you're not going to kill it anytime soon. And given the fact that these tablets are no heavier than average, good job, Samsung, for fitting that much battery in there. They do support 45 watt very fast charging as well. The optional book cover case has a nice quality feel. It's the kind that's easy to clean off, you know, fake sort of leather. And the keyboard on it is nice and tactile. Granted, you know, you're not talking about a big laptop sized keyboard because this is a little bit smaller, but it's nice to type on. And the trackpad supports gestures. It's big enough to actually handle that. So good job there. For biometrics, we have a fingerprint scanner in display on the larger S7 Plus, and it's actually fast. It's not like old generation Samsung in-display fingerprint scanners. If you get the 11 inch, then it's embedded in the power button. And there's also face unlock. Since Samsung positions this as a business ready product, we have Samsung DeX on board. I know a lot of you like Samsung DeX and it creates kind of more like a desktop experience and it works fine here in conjunction with the keyboard and you've even got some dedicated keys on the keyboard, jump into DeX, fast forward, move forward, that sort of thing. It's pretty well done for those of you who like that kind of experience. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. Again, Wi-Fi only, and there's one with 5G available as well with fallback to LTE, and that one is both millimeter wave and low band, sub six, anyway. Uh, it's a fingerprint magnet, yes it is, but other than that, gorgeous looking, very nice tablet. The only challenge is ever is gonna be Android app selection for tablets. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.